Okay, this is an absolutely beautiful King's Engine defense game played by Nesmetov in 1961. Um, I didn't know he even played the King's Engine defense, and there's a very nice idea here <laughs> in a variation which I've been playing the very first few moves quite a lot in Blitz Chess. So we have the King's Engine um, main line of variation. So e5. This is the classical variation, all standard moves so far. This is a big decision for me uh, personally, knight d7 or knight e8. It depends if you know you think knight d7 is going to hold up c5. I think that's the key decision. If knight e8, you're holding up d6 uh, quicker than having to reroute the knight there. Uh, so that's going to be exposed of the c5, etc. Knight c4. So d6 is a problem. So this is the decision. Let's choose knight e8. Maybe that's theoretically slightly better in this particular position if you consider um, white's accelerated queenside attack now with b4 so he's going to play c5 quite quickly then knight c4 okay so f5 traditional king's engine counterplay on the king side now g5 makes way for the knight i love the elegance of these knights like potentially coming back and then striking out the white's pawn chain with the king as a a target as well. So knight c4, standard king's engine move now, rook f7, combines attack with defense, defending against c7 infiltrations later, but also attacking, you know, with rook g7 and or even potentially rook h7, as this game demonstrates h7 is quite critical as well as trying to use g7. The bishop is also free now to start protecting d6 after bishop f8. So it's standard king's engine territory planned so far. Bishop d2, knight g6. Okay, the queen uh, has possibilities of coming out to h4 in some lines. The knight g6 is also potentially useful for knight f4s if black can do a, a positional pawn set later with g3 to try and vacate this this square. So that's again a potentially useful um, attacking move. So bishop e1, white tries to remain solid with these bishops, you know, trying to like strengthen the king side a bit, these squares. But um, bishop f8, black tries to remain solid a bit on the queen side as well, and is preparing the rook to be transferred to a more aggressive square. Now h5, okay, to play, play g4, there's pawn chain attack, undermining f3, the exploitable part of the pawn chain. Uh, now knight f6, lifting some protection away from d6, but um, it looks as though white. Uh, can't really um, with this bishop configuration. If this bishop was over here, it'd be a different story for d6. But over here, it seems a7 is more of the interest point for white. So putting knight f6 seems okay to release some pressure off d6. So cd cd knight b5. White expresses an interest in winning the a7 pawn. G4, now knight takes a7, now bishop d7. This is a standard pawn sec that black has at his disposal, his or her disposal in the king's engine to try and accelerate the g4, g3 pawn sec, try and get f4 for a knight. So a4, now standard g3 looking move. Bishop b6, queen e7, king h7, and now this is the interesting point for any king's engine player looking at this game, I believe. Um, what is a quick way of black? getting a kingside attack here. Is it going to be with takes h5, knight h5 to g, g3 or is it something else? Can actually the h file be used? As a king's engine player I found this very interesting now, this plan. This man actually chose rook h7, seemingly putting a rook behind darfly this pawn on h5. Because uh, this, this like slowing down, if, if that is the intention, there's always h3, and if white can get this light square bishop, then there's no attack at all against the black king. But there's a clever idea here. After knight b5, we see the stunning move played now. I'll give you five seconds, or ten seconds actually, see if you can guess it. So ten seconds starting from now. Okay, knight g4. So Nesmet is becoming good training for king's safety implications, uh, especially if you're going to play the king's engine defence like he does. Um, this is really dangerous now, this rook on h7, if it's opened up against h2. Uh, if you know, let's look, look at a concrete example, so hg, it's it's all over for the, for the white king in this kind of variation, while we're getting mated. 
so we can't open up that H file. It looks daft to open it up, and it is daft. So say H3. Now that's what actually what played, what was played. The knight has a good opportunity though to get onto E3. And what is the big deal about that? Well, it means this knight can potentially come to F4 if there's ever F takes E. So it's all sort of showing the picture, the jigsaws bits are coming together here. My e3, because this also adds more punch. The bishop takes h3 if the knight's, you know, attacking g2 as well. So white's king position is totally under fire here. White didn't take the knight on e3, but if he had, example variation, it's just totally like crushing, like mating there or um, here instead of that daft uh, g g takes say at rook f d1. This this kind of attack just is absolutely crushing so just getting the pieces in awkward squares and then like mating so this is all kind of king's engine juicy stuff for the king's engine player bishop d3 was played and now bishop takes e3 and look at that monstrous knight on e3 it really doesn't have to win the exchange or anything it just helps the attack so g2 check it's supporting g2 white really doesn't want to give up the queen so that pawn's left there just winning a rook and now after check Knight h4. These knights are really coordinating well with the queen. There's also also rook g7 in reserve. Queen f2. White just snaps that bishop, just winning another piece. So it doesn't mind the queen's coming off. Here it's just totally like crushing. Just I think mean, knight f4 and this, and then taking here and then g2 later. White had enough. He resigned here. But what what a nice play uh, play uh, strategy for the king's engine. So we have knight e8 instead of knight d7. Um, White's configuration is such the bishop is heading for the king side, which means a7 is also um, an idea for White if the bishop's on f2. But um, a very fast accelerated attack here with this key move rook h7 for knight g4 being the principal tactical idea. White's also wasted time, you know, putting the king on the h file as well, which further justifies this whole uh, tactical concept from Black. So it, it's made to look easy, but um, if you lose too many tempo in the king's engine, you, your queen side gets demolished and you just lose. So this was not, this is a nice plan to bear in mind if you're going to play the king's engine with black. Very very nice. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.